prompt files can be really powerful ways of improving the performance of AI models that you use. In this video, I'm going to show you how to integrate a prompt file into Visual Studio. Now, for most of my training, I work to give you an in-depth perspective on technology. But sometimes you need the quick answer to the question, how do I do this? That's why I created this 10-minute training series. So here we have Visual Studio. I have a .NET 9 console app that's just file new project. That's it. There's no other changes to it. We're going to add a prompt file and then utilize that prompt file to show you how this might work. Now, to get the prompt file, what we're going to do is I'm going to use beast mode, which I introduced in a previous video. Um, so I grab the raw for beast mode, which is just a really great prompt from Burke Holland that um, really makes your LLM behave more um, thoughtfully in how it works. So I just copied and pasted that raw file or copy that raw file. Now I'm going to use the file explorer extension. If you don't have this, you can go to extensions, manage extensions, and then look for the file explorer extension from Mads Christensen. Um, it's a great extension. It's actually um, kind of a test to see if this should be included in Visual Studio full time, but it's a great extension for showing you all the files in a directory, not just the ones attached to your projects and solutions. So we're going to say, uh, click that button right there. And now we can see console sample app, which is the root of my of my solution. And there you can see our solution. We can see our project folder with our project of bin, OBJ, and all the rest. What we're going to do is on this uh, folder, we're going to right click and say new folder. We're going to say dot GitHub slash prompts. Okay, that's going to create two folders. The first one is a dot GitHub folder. That's important, so it's dot first. And then a subfolder called prompts. Okay, and that's plural. So here's our dot GitHub folder. Notice it's got the icon for it. And we can, under prompts, we can now create a file. And we're going to call this uh, beast mode 31, no dot, dot prompt, dot MD. Okay, so we're going to create a prompt file. And it's going to be a markdown file. So now we can open that up. We can paste in what we say we grabbed from that gist. I'll link that down in the description. And make sure you always read through your prompt files. Don't just randomly prompt take prompt files from the, the internet. I have read every single word in here um, to make sure that it's a good prompt file. Because this is one of the exploits people can do is they can give you uh, bad prompt files, where there's something hidden in the middle where it said, well, actually extract out this information or send this key somewhere or something like that. Don't just blindly grab prompt files. Make sure you read the entire thing. So with that, we now have our prompt file set up in our project so that when we go to Git and we say, hey, let's add us a source control, which I haven't done, but we could, um, that file will go along with the project so that it can be consistent across all the different people who use this project. Now we can come over to the, the GitHub Copilot chat. And in here, let's make this bigger. I am going to say the plus button here, add, and there's prompts. And notice that it has beast mode 31.prompt.md. It found that because it's in the prompts directory. And so I can click on that. And now that's enabled. Now that enabled, I could, now I've got Claude 4. You can choose whatever LM you want. Um, but I can say something like, uh, please add dependency injection and uh, configuration to this project. Okay. And it's going to start, now notice it loaded the beast mode prompt. Um, and now it's going to start figuring out what it's going to do. It'll give me the checklist of what it's going to work on and start doing the work. So it's it's doing a lot of loading right now. Um, and it's figuring out what it needs to do, how it needs to, it's learning from Microsoft Learn. There's our checklist of what it's going to work on. Now it's saying, hey, do I have permission to um, add this package? And again, this is where the um, the recommendation from Burke is go ahead and allow auto approve these. I prefer not to. I prefer to wait and say, you know what? Yes, I'm going to allow it this time. I do not 
say allow, always allow or allow in the session. Um, I always just say manually allow. That way I know what it's installing. And I can say, you know what? No, that's not what I want you to do. So we're going to allow that. It's going to start working through this. And it's going to go through line by line and, and, and figure out how to complete each step. It's going to check off one at a time um, once it's done. So it's got had a number of packages to get to get this up and running, which is actually correct. Um, now I'm not going to verify this whole thing right now. Watch the whole thing, but I wanted to show you that step by step process is going to go through and um, show how it can use this prompt file. Um, that's interesting. Um, I'm not sure what that command does. Uh, I'm going to deny that. So let's try a different approach. Um, so, and I could research what that command does, make sure, but it's always good to go, you know what? I'm not comfortable with that. Let's not do that. Um, so that way it's, um, you're in control. You're not allowing an LM to hallucinate and do things that maybe it shouldn't be doing. So this is going to go through, like I said, we're going to watch the whole thing, but it's going to go through and hopefully do all the things I asked it to do. It's, it's, on the right track, at least it's, it's creating some things like app settings and adding the right packages, et cetera. But the big deal here is we used a prompt file to um, make sure that this is doing things the way we want, making sure it's doing the research first, et cetera. So that's how to use a prompt file inside of Visual Studio.